Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and well this video will forever be known as the vlog after the night before, right? Because it is the vlog where the, the whole um, incident happened with Sarah being exposed as a hateful mother and Chris obviously had to take the the clip out and everything like that and this vlog shows that actually happening or the aftermath of it anyway and um, yeah so without further ado let's get right into it and see what we can discover today. Aurora! Where's your little toys gone? Have they fallen down? There we go! You look like a little princess! <laughs> oh my gosh, my mum voice must be so annoying to other people. Not just your mum voice, Sarah, just your voice in general. Sorry. I just think it's going for my brain. <laughs> Sad times. Right guys, I've got something really, really important to ask you. What's a penguin's favourite family member? <laughs> Antarctica. <laughs> Green penguins. Oh lord, everyone, everyone click. Please okay. <laughs> <laughs> that one subscribe. Where's the other one? <laughs> Why was the penguin's head so cold? Why? Because he was wearing a nice cap. <laughs> Where's Mila's? Daisy boy. Yeah. How do penguins get around? Don't know. On a bicycle. <laughs> so we woke up this morning in the most beautiful spot. We actually didn't know the view was so good when we pulled up here last night because it was already dark. That's the best thing about my life. That is the best thing about van life. I love waking up and not knowing what your surroundings are going to look like in the morning. It's really exciting. Especially when you're in Scandinavia or any other equally as beautiful place like this. Well, here's a conundrum for you, Sarah. What if you parked up for the night and it was all pitch black and everything, and then you woke up in the morning and you were outside like a terrifying cave with a bear and a, a, an erupting volcano and things like that? Would you also think that that was the most exciting thing in the world? Where the view every morning is different, and this morning it did not disappoint. Now, I think, are you sending your drone up? Uh, the weather's coming in, but I'm going to try it in a minute, yeah. It's starting to snow, so if you're going to do it, you need to do it right now. Um, there's a massive, massive fjord right out... I'm guessing that's a fjord. No, it's just a lake. A lake? Yeah, we're, we're, we're not in a fjord region no more. No fjords, no more. Okay, just it's a lake. a lake. The Ingham family vlogs, everybody, where every moment is a teachable moment and it's education non-stop, even when it's Sarah. Although Sarah should already know which region she's currently in and all the um, quirks about it, you know, whether it's fjords or lakes or lochs or whatever it is, right? <laughs> she should already know this information, but she's there for the education, guys. It's just a lake. <laughs> And it's absolutely huge and you can't actually see any water because it's completely covered in snow but right in the distance there's the hugest mountains that have the thickest snow on them and it just looks so beautiful. Enough of me chatting about it, here's Chris's drone footage.
eat it. <laughs> Fluffy socks, hot cup of tea, and that view. Yeah, that view, Sarah, of your manky socks, your manky feet, your um, ever so swollen feet. Yeah, um, they, they look lovely, I'm sure. But why are they on the dash? Any clue, Sarah Ingham? Um, clearly, you're driving. Well, you're not driving, I hope, <laughs> anyway. But the, the vehicle's moving and you have got your feet. Is it even possible to put a seatbelt on you whilst you basically lying backwards with your feet in the air? Anyway, right, yeah, I'm I'm thinking that that's probably not um, legal. I, I don't know if there are laws about these sort of things. Lovely jubbly. Now, speaking of Chris and his insane uh, moronity, moronicalness, mor moronity. Anyway, yes, being a moron, right? He has c taken to Instagram to try and plug this amazing vlog that he's put out, right? Because obviously he doesn't know that, uh, well, he thinks, but he, in fact, he knows what the rest of us already know, right? And that is vlogs are shit and nobody wants to watch. He says, I'm sure most would rather watch us shopping at B&M or endlessly filming the same stuff day in, day out in our house back in England, but this is still pretty cool. <laughs> I need to link the vlog. So basically that's a very passive aggressive thing for him to say like you know i know you guys would rather watch b&m vlogs but you know we're in <laughs> we're in norway or sweden we're in scandinavia we are doing some really amazing stuff for you guys <laughs> at least he's aware you know at least he's aware that his vlogs are shit and nobody wants to watch nice little schedule of aurora stop today just now in the snow in Sweden. Get your tits out. Get your tits out. Get your tits out for the lads. <laughs> I can't really pull that off, can I? My my issue here, right, Sarah, is in any other circumstance, if you weren't breastfeeding, you would never show off, you know, your chest like that, right? You would never, like, lift up your top and say, look, have a look at this. I know that that comment is going to be like anger a lot of mothers but i have a point to my point <laughs> the point is that stop showing it to the world right be proud of your breastfeeding journey and be proud that you can breastfeed and you know normalize breastfeeding if that's what you want to do but i personally feel it's not sarah trying to normalize it right sarah is is more of a look at me aren't i an amazing mother i want to be the amazing um influencer that influences the world in order to breastfeed right that's what sarah's doing right now it's not that she's she wants to it, i don't know what she's doing but in any other circumstance she would never show off her assets in that way would she 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 wouldn't she she no, she's not that type of person, I don't think. I mean, dread to think what she's like in the bedroom, actually. It's been such a nice drive, hasn't it? It's literally beautiful here, so much. It's snowing like you would not believe. I mean, it's stopped now, but I mean, it has been. Look at my window. Yes. Yeah, this is how cold it is as well. It's actually got... Aurora, we've got don't. full ice all over the we've window. We've got full-on ice on the window. This is, this is developed as we've been driving. Even though it's boiling in the van, that just proves how cold it is outside because the windows, Mad. despite being boiling hot in the van, the windows are actually. You can see where the where the hot air right there. We we'll see where you can see where the hot air is on the window right from this little vent. It's got like a pattern here that's fine, and this little corner here where it's obviously not hitting, it's just iced. So weird. Okay. Is that? Yeah, it's iced as well. Oh, good. Hello, oh, darling. Gosh. Are you done oh, feeding she looks now? So cute today. You had lots of milkies. I feel like she's really developed. It's probably the four month sleep regression she's going through, the four months leap. Because we're up every single hour during the night at the minute. Yep, yeah, every single hour. But she obviously is developing loads because she's just changing all the time, isn't she's she? So cute. Changing all the time. Aurora. Little fuzzy blonde head. She's so sweet. 
Are you sure she's got blonde hair, Chris? I mean, if she's got blonde hair, whose baby is it? <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> you know, you don't have blonde hair as much as you wish that you did. You don't, right? <laughs> Sarah doesn't. Um, and, uh, yeah. Who does, though? What's his name? Dave? Your brother Dave. Don't they have blonde hair? Anyway, don't want to start those rumours again. Now I'm looking at all this white stuff outside that I don't get to play in. What are you eating? You what? phantom chewing. <laughs> You're getting ready to eat big food. Oh. You want to eat the big food, you oldies? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm on a group on Facebook there. There's like loads of... <laughs> loads of babies all born in October. And they're all weaning their babies now. Oh, boom. I don't know, four, all, four months, that's what people used to do, I'm sure. No, it's not, it's what they used to do back in the day, but at the, uh, even though loads of people, a couple of people are commenting saying it's not recommended anymore until six months, they're all just like, no, my pediatrician told me I could. And then the one woman commented today, bless her, well, I don't know what I'm saying, bless her, saying that she's been feeding her baby boy foods, just letting him have taste, she said, since he was one and a half month old. I didn't comment, but no one had commented back. I didn't comment back. Well, I ain't comment back. Commented back to any of them because I don't feel like it'd be. They don't want to hear, like. They're just telling us. They're just like they, they don't want advice. They're just letting you know. No, I'm doing it at four months, and that's that. They don't want to be told it's not recommended till six. So I'm just letting them get on with it because obviously everyone parents different. But I could not believe that comment that says she'd been feeding a baby since one and a half months old. Just tastes, she yeah. said, like mashed potato and things like that. But, Arara, are you ready for big girl food? No, we're gonna wait at least. You want some big girl food? We said her first food is gonna be cake on my birthday. <gasps> you want some cake? How old was she then? Um, six six nearly. Oh, yeah, two days away from six months. <gasps> are you gonna have some cake? Oh, she's so cute talking today. <laughs> she's definitely interested in food, though, isn't she? She's now, when you eat, she's trying to grab it out of your hand. Yeah, she tried to grab my flump yesterday. Yes, she did. Did <laughs> you try and grab Daddy's flump? Hello. <laughs> Look how cute she is. Hello. Anyway, have you told everybody where we are? No. Uh, oh. No. <laughs> oh, she's so cute. I can't deal with her. What did you see on the road, Molly? What? What did you see on the road? I saw a moose. Oh, I saw yeah, a blooming moose. huge moose. It was massive. I was literally like, oh my gosh, look at the moose. And everyone turned, but no one saw it because we drove past. I, I swear it was, I thought it was a horse to start with. I was like, oh, why is a horse by itself? And then I was like, it turned around and it was like, it was eating something. Its mouth was like giving it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was obviously a moose. I couldn't believe it. That's three meese I've seen now. No, no, not meese. Goose, moose. Geese, meese. <laughs> I'm stopping talking to you now. <laughs> Can't bother with you anymore. <laughs> All right, not one person's going to recognise where we are right now. If you do, if you do, then you are an absolute genius. Or maybe you're just an absolute G at watching our videos. What do you reckon? Anybody? Anybody for anybody? Yeah, I recognise it, Chris. It's a bit of snow. It is um, the same bit of snow that you went to this time last year. I'm sure of it. <laughs> I recognise those trees with the snow on in the background. It's so, it's so delightful. I'm sure we, we... Go on, tell us, please. Nah, you're not going to recognise this, man. <laughs> Welcome to... Home for the night. <laughs> in the middle of a forest. In the middle of the forest. We just drove into it. There are tie tracks right there. But we decided to reverse in instead. Um, but yeah, middle of the forest. Someone's carved us out a little path. We're going to make the most of it. <gasps> oh my gosh. That's terrifying. Okay, so we are at the most profound, I like that word, this trip. This most profound park for night sleep stop that we stopped at in the Sprinter. The most profound park for night sleep stop. I'm not even sure a, a, a parking spot can be profound. <laughs> Go on, please do tell me how on earth was this parking space profound? 
this time last year. There is one road that comes from Norway into Sweden from where we are in Lapland. So obviously we're passing the same things that we saw in the Sprinter right now as we're traveling through to get to where we're going. And this was one of my favorite places we ever wild camped. It was like random. We'd been in a blizzard. I'm gonna tell the little quick story. We'd been in a blizzard all day traveling through from Norway to Sweden. We crossed over and when we got here, one minute, branch is way too high. When we got here, this was like one of the only like suitable park for nights because the rest of them were all snowed in. And this one was just all good. It had been snow plowed up just like this has right now. So there was this little, this little garage bit we've got here. And we pulled in and we I got a, Sarah got a really good shot of the sprinter like reversing into it and then all the lights turning out and I was just loving that shot. I was like, yeah, that's one of the best shots of the sprinter we've taken all trip so far. So your memories of the trip are basically what you see that you've recorded on film and because that clip of you reversing into the parking spot was such a good clip, it means that you, this was one of the most memorable parts of the journey. Is that Am I getting this right? Because it sounds a little bit odd. Yeah, and we stopped here for the night, and when we woke up, there was animal prints outside the van all over the snow here, right? Because we're, we're deep in forest right now. Like if I send the drone up, there's forest everywhere. We've been driving through it for time. Anyway, there's all these little tracks down here, look. Going deep into the forest that we were all loving in the dark because they were just spooky as heck because the moonlight, it was a clear night and the moonlight was lighting up all the, all these little tracks going down into the forest. And the sprinter was packed here and we were just, you know, we were just in, in and amongst all this beautiful lush forest and there was animal tracks everywhere in the morning when we woke up. But before the morning came, one of the best things happened ever was when I was editing at 2 a.m. I literally was so tired. I couldn't see out the front at this point because I had my little, my, my thermal, blinds on the window and I stepped out of the van at 2 a.m. to the clearest beautifulest night ever looked up in the sky and I couldn't believe my eyes when green streaks of aurora were just flying over my head yeah I remember that bit Chris I do it was such a profound moment in your life wasn't it but I also remember the fact that around about the same time in the UK <laughs> Many, many thousands of people also saw the same aurora um, in this. So you didn't need to leave the country in the first place, did you? I was like, oh my God, no way. The first time I ever saw that, it was too like, it was way too late to like start waking people up and be like, aurora's outside, the aurora's outside. Um, so I filmed it on my phone. I'll throw the clip in now, I'll dig it out and I'll throw it in now. Wow, over the van right now. Literally our first night camping in the wild, wild. Like it's that dark right now that you can't see even the van. And Mother Nature has given us her finest. But this was the first place I ever saw the Northern Lights. And it was so, it was such a special night. It was just so, so cool. It blew my absolute mind. You know what the saddest part of this story is? The fact that Chris is telling it was such, like, such good memories. It's the most amazing thing that ever happened to him and things like that. But not one of his family was with him at the time when he was seeing this amazing sight. And he just has such good memories, the fact that he got to see it before they did. So, whilst we're coming past... I had to look it up on the map because I knew we were going to come past it. So I had to look it up on the map again and I found it and I had to stop. Really, I wanted to get to here last night, but from where we slept last night, this is another two hours further on. And we couldn't have done another two hours further on in the storm that was happening last night. So we couldn't make it here. But the goal was to get here last night, recreate that same dark nighttime shot of the big van pulling into this that we did with the Sprinter. Just for, just for you know, because we're geeks like that. And then maybe see the aurora again, who knows? Who knows? We wouldn't have done last night though, because it was a cloudy, snowy night last night, but it's just so cool. It's literally the most beautiful place ever. All right, diesel heater, ruining my nature noise. It's just, just awesome. But it's time to get on. Next stop and all. Not too far away either.
genuinely can't believe that we've had a whole segment based around reminiscing over a car parking spot. Brilliant. This is content that people love to see, Chris. They love it. Now, what we're about to witness here is um, yet another recreation, and this is going to blow your mind. So yeah, this is basically Chris filming the exact same type of shot in the RV that he filmed in the Sprinter on the same road. On the, it's just very weird. It's like not just recreating, not just going to the same places that they've been to, and and that's it. They are actually recreating the exact same shots and the same scenes, and <laughs> it's, it's very very odd. for the night so I've been quiet in here like what's going on everyone's doing their own thing and I'm just walking around like who wants to play and everyone's like not me <laughs> okay. no it's really dark isn't it yeah Hopefully you can hear Isla. There's the white noise machine on that's keeping Aurora fast asleep right now. So that's why the noise, you might be able to hear a, like an aeroplane type of noise in the background. That's why. Chris is on the laptop, Esme's doing her own thing. And then over here, we got Mila down here. She's having a turn of Jace's iPad. You're very kind boy. And she's, been, she's actually just put a princesses down. She's been playing with her princesses, haven't you? And then Jace just said, do you want to turn to this? <laughs> she's not had it all day, so she's very excited for a little game. And then over here, we've got, we've got the socials going on. These two are just snuggling and chilling out. Yeah, so it's all really dark in here, all the bedroom. I need to put the waters away. But yeah, this is us right now, guys. Van life. Everyone chilling. It's not always chaos and loud and energy filled. Sometimes it's just cosy vibes in the van. Yeah, Sarah, you keep telling yourself that. It's just cosy vibes, guys. It's not always loud and um, obnoxious and, and crazy and chaotic and everything else that it was like 10 minutes before when Sarah was having a go at Chris for leaving that clip in the vlog. <laughs> They all have a sense of, like, despair and, like, being down because they've had to witness, like, this, like, utter row that's going on. Everyone just chilling and doing their own thing, which is why I love this van. There's just so much space for everyone to spread out. And we can all fit on this and watch movies, but it's nice for everyone to be able to just spread out in their own spaces. I go sit on my own in the bedroom. No, I'm really joking, I'm not really. Because someone's got to make dinner tonight. Right, which lights? Ah, do you want that one off? There's so many different lights in here that I never know which to press. And usually when I'm doing this, I'm turning the lights on, I've got someone going, no, not those ones. Oh, that's on Nami, turn those off. Someone was like, don't dare touch any light switches because I always get it wrong. So we've put up 
you probably just saw actually, a duvet to block off the front cabin of the van because now that we're in like real minus temperatures, like it's minus 16 here I think. So we're popping on like the duvet things because the front cabin with the windows just gets so cold overnight. Obviously during the day we've got the heaters running but overnight it gets freezing and it lets loads of cold air in so we've put that up there as well as some thermal window. What are the thermal window things you've got? Uh, we've not used them this trip because we've not needed to but I feel like we might need to start using them. Right, making meatballs. No, making meatballs. I got meatballs and spaghetti. But we're gonna have them tomorrow or the next day. And we're gonna have ag eggs. Eggs. We're gonna have eggs. Um, omelettes in hot baguette. Mm, so good. And we're having chorizo. What? Is it chorizo or chorizo? I always get it wrong. Chorizo. This one. Yeah. It's oh, cute. On. No, I don't need the other lights on. It's cosy in here and nice. I like the lights out. Bit of advice for you, Sarah. Please, please turn the lights back on. It's really dull and, and doesn't give me good vibes when it looks... It doesn't just look dark. It looks purple, right? It looks like a brothel. There, I said it, right? Just put the lights on. Um, chorizo, cheese and onion omelettes in hot bread. It's going to be good. Oh, all I heard behind me was okay, JC, okay, just give me a hug. What have you done? What have you, JC boy, been playing? Bereen, your princesses. Mommy will sneeze and <laughs> she, she, she made it flat. She made it flat. Did she push them all over with a sneeze? That's delicious. When we're going to eat off those, Mila. Thank you, darling. <laughs> you're playing with your princesses with Jace. Yeah, you're giving him hugs. No, no, all of the plates were upside down. Were they? Were they making like an igloo? I think you can take your patch off now, mate. Go start. Daddy, can you take his patch off? Yes, fast Yes, he can. I, I can take off his You do it yourself? Good yeah, boy. I'm a boss. You are a boss. Ready? You just do it carefully, okay? Yeah. Good boy. Yummy! N D O B. I'm gonna get you tummy. I'm gonna get you tummy. <laughs> Are you ready? Uh, I'm gonna get that tummy. Uh, <laughs> That's so cute. You're so cute, darling. Is that Dada? You love Mama Ma? You love Mama Ma? Mama got the mookies. <laughs> Mm. Oh, I could just eat you all up. She's so, so gorgeous. You're such a gorgeous girl. Oh. Oh, what's that? Hello. Hello, <laughs> cheeky darling. Give me all them kisses. Ready? Mm. No. So, my mum, don't laugh in that for. Hello. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, cheeky girl. She got the cheeky swells. I've got mum guilt tonight, guys. Why? Could it possibly be because you've just finished yelling at everybody, um, particularly those that were involved in the big scandal from the other day? Is it that one, right? Because um, that's that would give you a bit of mum guilt, I'm sure. Because somebody on the vlog commented that you can't use retinol or they think that you're not supposed to use retinol on your face when you're breastfeeding. And I've been doing it for the last two months. Oh, wait, where's Google? Let's go to Google. Month, have two months. Wait, is that to Google it? Let's Google it now. <laughs> I'm just taking someone's word for it and being like, yeah, I can't do it. I know let's, I've got girl and I've not even... Let's Google it and I've not on. even um, researched it myself, so let's ask Dr. Google. Okay, I just looked and here are my findings. 
A US study found that products with a higher concentration of retinol or prescription formulas are best avoided due to lack of evidence from peer-reviewed peer studies proving their safety during pregnancy. And because of this, it is not recommended to use retinol whilst breastfeeding. Yeah, I'll show you this. So is it lack of studies? She's trying to drink that cocaine no, and do not. Food. She's starting, she wants to wean. Hello. Watch her. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, it's not recommended with, in breastfeeding, so I feel really bad that I've, I need to Google now why. Um, You're not going to stop though, are you, Sarah? Nobody's going to tell you what to do. Not least some um, fabricated nonsense online, right? Yeah, they're trying to keep you in the matrix, Sarah. I would, you know, not listen to any medical advice, you know. Um, it does just say lack of studies though. Yeah, it says through lack of studies. Yeah, it, it could be. It doesn't. Yeah, it's because it's lack of studies basically. So they could be completely fine, but there's been no studies Whoa. to show, so it's you not known. So obviously it's best avoided, which is what I'll be doing from now on. Um, look at my little family. Look at everyone. Just look at them all. I love you all so much. Do you really, Sarah? Do you love them all so much? This feels like the moment where she had to gather them all around just to reaffirm or to affirm that she does, in fact, love them after the little um, spat that she had going on a few minutes ago. I'm sure of that. And um, it feels like that sort of moment, you know, when your parents get you together and say, like, Sorry, guys, I didn't really mean it. I didn't mean everything that I said, you know. Mum and Dad are just having an argument. Just had a disagreement. I'm a favourite, yep. Yep. Because <laughs> I am. Uh, no. Oh, I thought, oh, gosh, I thought, um, I thought Mila took a oh pants off then. Cheeky darling! <laughs> what did you say, Ella? I just found the cutest thing, right? When I'm older and I get a car, this is the air oh. that I need. It is a mini vinyl. Zoom this it. is a mini vinyl. Me an air freshen you can change the cd final i mean that's very cool it's okay. very cool would that work <gasps> the same in your car in your hat in your bedroom or is it one of them that clips to the vent on oh, it's a vent clip one yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so cool maybe i'll get it from my car then <gasps> yeah you can be a swifty mum i can be you a swifty do, you don't like style but you're gonna sing lyrics on what you go you go you go wait where's it red light red light you can see me dancing in the spotlight I'll see yeah you. Red light. It's red light. Midnight. Baby, I thought it was red choice. light. It's swifty, not red Hold light. On. No, no, no. It's midnight. No, listen. Red light. Not red light. <laughs> you can see hey. me in the spotlight. Yeah, that's what you sing. Why do you sing it like that? <laughs> uh, Mila, Mila, what you got in your mouth? Where's that from? Where's it from? Mila, what you got? <laughs> A ninny! A ninny! You found it in the bathroom? Yeah. You're not a girl. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at her mouth. She's desperate to. Don't so, obviously let her. It's just funny, I'm not going to obviously let her do it, but. Look at her mouth. She's like, give it to give it to <laughs> No, 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 dearly. No, no, no. Oh, bless her. It makes me so sad when we've still got so. You know when they get to this stage? Where they're clearly interested in what you're doing. Mean, she's not Shirley missing Baby out because she's be... not missing out because she doesn't know what she's missing out on. Yeah, but surely babies intrigued. tell you when they're ready. I'm sure four months is, is when, you're, when, you're, when you're allowed to leave. I'm sure most parents mean four months. I did with Isabel. Yeah. I think we did it, Jace. With Jazz. No, we didn't with Jace. Jace. No, we did Beyblade Weeding at six months with Jace. Mm -hmm. what, pretty what, sure. What? Maybe it was like five and a half months with Jace, but we did Beyblade Weeding. And the reason I say five and a half months is because I'm sure he had something. In Amsterdam when we were in Amsterdam. Uh, was, was he nicked a breadstick off me? He nicked a breadstick, didn't yeah, he, or something yeah, yeah. like that. And that was in Amsterdam when he was five and a half months. Yeah. He also um, had a bit of a chicken nugget. That's right, his first ever McDonald's at the age of five months. You know, I'm thinking that might quite contribute to, to that. Um, there was also the incident around about that time where he had a slice of a pizza from Greg's that's right and he also had a chicken drumstick around that time as well I remember because I went a little bit mad about it because uh, you know a chicken drumstick and you know it's basically a bone you know a chicken bone right and uh, I remember you defended that at the time weird I know weird what one remembers isn't it I remember that was the first time. Oh yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, it was. I'm definitely right. I was, I was, and Mila was six I was going to say because the first thing he ate was that breadstick in Amsterdam. I tried to eat that breadstick yeah. in Amsterdam. Yeah. So 
that must have been five and months. And the older so. girls, Isabel was definitely four months, definitely. And then Esme probably was about five months and Isla was probably about five months as well, but they, neither of them were baby led weaned, they were all jars. Or yeah. we carroted, didn't we? Carrot. No, we no but I mean, stuff, we did we? the blended stuff. I don't mean carroted, I mean the blended stuff. But um, yeah, it's not recommended now, something to do with their digestive systems, not, um, it's not, what's the word? You know, it's not, <laughs> what is it? The digestive system not developed, yeah, it's not developed enough. And it can cause problems in later life, I think. Yeah, anyway, studies change all the time. New evidence, new studies. With, en with every child I've had, the recommendations for everything has been different. It changes all the time. But the up-to-date one is six months. Anyway, we're ending the vlog because we're all chilling. <laughs> just keep looking around at them all, just chilling out together. Everyone just relax. Me, look at that ninny out of your mouth, you cheeky darling. But you touchy girl, get that out of your mouth. I brought, because Aurora started taking dummies now, she takes his Tommy Tippy Ultralight, keep getting messages about which ones she has. Go on Amazon, I'll leave a link down in the description box down below. It's Tommy Tippy Ultralight Ooh. ones. Come as a pack of four for £10, I think. They're the only ones she likes. But just before we left, I called into a shop and it was too late to order more on Amazon. And I picked up some of these Tommy Tippy ones, just the... I was about to say cheap ones, but they're not. They're about the same price, but they're just the regular Tommy Tippy ones that you can get from like home bargains. I picked up a pack of those and put them in the bathroom just in case we like lost them all or I don't know, we came unstuck one night. And um, yeah, Mila clearly found them in the cupboard and helped herself. Which is hilarious because she never took a dummy. Never. She never took one. She never same as Isabel. Isabel never. Isabel didn't have any dummies. Never wanted it, never needed it. Mila was the same. She never ever had a dummy. Um, Jace didn't have a dummy until he was about six months, something, nine months. <laughs> what did he say the other day? Jace? Yeah, when he found them dummies, he snuck, he snuck it out and he was like, Mama, is that Can I, I taste it for five minutes? <laughs> what do you mean, can I taste it for five? Same as Isla! It makes, and they said, no, my mate just. No, it makes, makes me chill so out. No, I said, yeah. it makes me chill. I'll chill for longer if I have. I was like, I don't care if you chill. Get up and <laughs> use some energy. It makes me feel so relaxed. It, it, makes, me, oh, it makes me so relaxed. <laughs> I was like, no, but I was exactly the same with dummies. She had a, her and Esme both had dummies. That's what I'll get into. Them two needed dummies. I feel like some babies just need them. No, they definitely don't. They needed them. Esme and Isla took them straight away and they loved them. I only really remember Isla like Esme I, got rid of hers quite early. Isabel needed Isla. a dummy. Isabel needed a dummy because at five a.m. Oh, everybody yeah, would get them. Oh yeah, because then they pulled mum's nipper. No, 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 no. I'm not oh, talking about that. That's oh, not sorry. 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 I breastfed about... Isabel and she had really bad latch. <laughs> You, and yeah. You don't give dummies to, to supplement for food, do you? You do, Ned. I know, but I'm not even I'm talking about Isla had dummies. Isla had dummies. She did do that. Uh, you're scaring her all right. You're scaring her all right. It's too loud. <laughs> Isabel, you're so, me and Chris literally just got together. Isabel was like, just walking. She was literally just walking. She wasn't talking, nothing. She just toddling. But she, she used to wake up at like 4 a.m. and to soothe herself back to sleep, she'd go. Uh, like her engine like noise really loud. And I remember like that first night when you stayed over or something, and you were like, "What's that noise?" I was like, "What's that noise?" I was like, "Oh, it's just Isabel." I was like, "What's she doing?" She's she fine. She's getting herself back to sleep. This is like okay. <laughs> and then after that, every night you used to go into her and you used to go, you used to be like, shh, she's okay, she's okay. I was like, no, she's fine. She's totally fine. She just makes that noise to get herself back to sleep. Mm. Funny times. Mm. Anyway, I've tried to end this vlog about five times. It's going to be a really long outro. So thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you come back tomorrow because we're at a pretty cool place and we have some boss fun tomorrow. Been a bit of a van day for the last two days, hasn't it? Not tomorrow. Oh no. Not tomorrow and the next day. Oh no. And have some fun. So thank you all so, so much for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 5 p.m. Good day, guys. Well, there we go, guys. Yet another fabulous vlog. I've got to say, that was intense, wasn't it? Intense. I could have sworn that yesterday they told us that it was going to be a brilliant vlog, this one. Or, or would, did I misremember? Because I feel like that's what they said. But, you know, this was pretty shit. It was another reminiscing day about a car park. Yeah, that that's it right <laughs> reminisced about a car park that was brilliant wasn't it um 
there's nothing really else I can say about that. It's, 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 it's fucking shit. Honestly, I don't even know why they are going, let alone filming it for us to watch, right? So anyway, um, please let me know if uh, you've enjoyed it in any way by giving it a thumbs up and comment all of your thoughts about it down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Until next time, have a brilliant day. Take care of yourselves and bye-bye.